right, Knights of Horror is out here. Stranger Things drive through experience. Pretty cool so far. Don't know how I'm gonna be able to how much I'm gonna be able to do this, but you get what you get. This is just uh this is just to get in right here. So this is so dope. Really feeling the 80s, got the radio station on. This is cool, I like this a lot. So far so good, man. I'm excited. You excited? Stoked. We're ready. You look right there, you can see Billy's car chilling. That's really cool. And then right now, currently, we are in line. There's the Starcourt Mall. AV Club. Scoops Ahoy employees, man. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am here at the Stranger Things drive through experience. Now, it is so cool so far. We are waiting in line to get in. Don't know how, I'm gonna be, how much I'm gonna be able to film for you guys, but I'm gonna get little snippets at the beginning, and then you'll, you'll get a full review after. It is super cool. I love this so much. It, it really brings you into Hawkins in the 80s, and I love how you get to start at the Starcourt Mall. Uh, they got the Hawkins AV Club. They got Billy's car sitting out there. It is legit, probably really cool. I'm here with my sister. There she is. She's excited. She's a big Stranger Things fan as well. But we are here. We're ready to go. Uh, we had a 6.45 reservation with 6.25, so we got in a little early. Now we're just waiting to get in. Uh, I am super excited, though. Are you excited? Yeah. She's very excited. She can't wait, man. Uh, we both love Stranger Things. I binged Season 3 before I, uh, I came here because I wanted to just get a fresh uh, memory of what we're going to be seeing today, and I am super stoked for this. I cannot wait. They got people dressed up, taking orders. It is so cool. So I'm going to give you guys my full review after. Like I said, don't know how, mom, how much I'm going to be able to film inside the actual thing, but you'll get a lot of pre-show stuff. So this is cool. Oh, look, they got an 11 over there. That, hold on, I got to get this for you guys. There's 11 with the radio on the pole right there. That is so cool. That is awesome. There's the Starcourt Mall, by the way. I love this so far. This is awesome. Really cool. Really cool. There's the Starcourt Mall right there. And Eleven with her radio trying to contact her friends. It's a really cool theme. Hawkins AV Club over there. That's so cool. This thing is cool. Trying to get Billy's car back there. There it is right there. Car he drives in the, in the show. Really cool. Really, really cool. Another thing to take note is they give you this menu once you get in too. It's got a bunch of treats you can get for the uh, the experience. It's really cool. It's, it's about an hour long. Uh, I'm super stoked for it. So let's see what this has in store for us. What is going on ladies and gentlemen? I had just fresh off the Stranger Things drive through experience. I must say, this was probably one of the best things I've ever been through. Um, as far as drive throughs go, and as far as even haunts go, this is a whole new level of how you do things. So, I want to break it down step by step. So, there's going to be full on spoilers for this event. If you guys are planning on going to this event, you don't want to know and you want to go in blind, click off this video now. Uh, I'm going to also be giving my review at the end. As, as you saw in the beginning, I had a couple of footage from the uh, the opening scene. That's about the only footage you can really get at this place. Um, and also, they tell you to turn off your cameras and everything at the end so full spoiler warning for anyone who's planning on going click off this video now but if you're not planning on going you want to know what happens here's the rundown so guests are first brought up to the star court uh mall opening ceremony now you can go to one of two ways you can go the general mission way of course if you have a general mission ticket or the vip entrance with the vip ticket uh the only difference i noticed is going into the vip you get to go to the star car wash where you get a photo taken of yourself uh, and it's got a lot of cool stuff in it and it's a special uh like collective photo you get to take home uh guests are then pulled around the corner the first thing you see when you pull around this corner is billy's uh car from the show, which I thought was really cool, blasting a bunch of uh, glam rock and metal and all that, because you know in the show he's a big fan of all that stuff. You then come around the corner and you are greeted by the giant Star Court Mall facade. Uh, you have the uh, science teacher up there. He's pretty much your DJ, your your host for the opening segment. Uh, and you have, of course, all the uh, the tents up. They're serving food. Scoops Ahoy is there. Um, I actually got... Uh, you're given one of these in the very beginning. This is a little menu of the Star Court food. 
uh, those VIP dinner combos, snack combos, and of course your regular stuff. Uh, you get you can get candy between Skittles or Kit Kat. You get a box of popcorn, lightly salted buttered popcorn. Uh, they have the Scoops Ahoy choice where you get one scoop of chocolate cannonball plus one scoop of vanilla overboard. So it's a double scoop of each flavor. They have, of course, beverages, uh, bottled soda, Coke, Diet Coke, and Sprite. And of course, they have um, Topo Chino uh, sprinkling, uh, sparkling water and bottled water. Uh, and then you can also get a collector's cup with a soda or without a soda. So you can buy just the cup itself or you can get it with a soda. If you are the VIP Starcourt food people, you can get a dinner combo of corn, uh, corn diggity combo, quarter pound, corn dog on a stick, Pringles, and a drink. A New York pizza box, one slice, pepperoni or cheese, uh, Pringles plus a drink. And shawarma snack attack, uh, falafel wrap, Pringles, and a drink. Snack combos include Starcourt sweets, um, Red Vines, Skittles, Kit Kat, plus two drinks. Uh, Tiger's Taste, a box of popcorn, red vines, and two drinks. The Munchies, two boxes of popcorn, Kit Kat Skittles, and two drinks. That is your food options for there. It's really cool in this area, too. You have a lot of themed people around. They're dressed in the Scoops Ahoy stuff. They have a lot of 80s attire on. On top of that, you have uh, characters such as Will, Mike, and Lucas running around, as well as Max and Eleven are all running around recreating iconic scenes. Slightly different to fit the more setting of where you're at. But nonetheless, such a good time. From there, you are told you are going to be going to the grand reopening of the Starcourt Mall because this takes place post season three of um, Stranger Things. Now, I have to remind you guys that this takes place heavily focuses take place on uh, season three, but throughout the experience, you'll see stuff from season two and season one. So they do incorporate all three seasons of Stranger Things in this experience. As you go and start your experience, you go around the corner and you are told you are going to the back entrance. As you're heading to, to said back entrance, you actually see Hopper's police truck, which I thought was really cool. The Ford Bronco, um, such a cool car. I think it was a Bronco. Um, and it's all decked out like Hopper's in the show. And then you make your way into a parking garage. Now, this whole experience takes place at three different levels of a parking garage, and they executed it wonderfully. As you're driving up, you are told there is no filming or talking on the phone because you do not want to give away your position because you're infiltrating the Russians' secret base. Technically, you're really going under Starcourt Mall, but apparently you're going into, this, you're going into the, the parking garage, which takes you to your first scene. As you're driving up, you are being told a list of things of what's going to happen and a lot of famous quotes from the show. You're going to be, you are being told that you're going to be infiltrating the Russian secret base to see what is going on and what they're doing down there. Uh, and you are also told, like in the show, to just wave and smile if asked anything. From here, guests are bring into the first room where you have two portals, one on each side. You have a bunch of angry Russians looking at you, and you are pulled up to your first stop. I believe if you have general mission, you are on the sides of each um, area, and if you have VIP, you park right directly into the middle. Um, guests are then brought in, and the first thing you see is Robin and Steve. Now, this is their um, kind of escape through the Russian base, and the Russians are catching on to them and trying to um, catch them as they were. But Robin and Steve are trying to recruit you to help them any way possible to get out. Uh, from there, you, you see uh, Robin and Steve just go around the cars and interact with you. I actually want to give a big shout out to the, the guy who played Steve. On the far left side, going towards like on your way to the next uh, area, the next scene, um, he was really cool to me, and he was just all out in character, and he, he did an am amazing, phenomenal job. Uh, so did the entire cast. But then later on, the Russians catch on to Robin, and um, they catch on to Robin and Steve's plan and try to catch him, and that's where Dustin comes in. Now Dustin comes in, of course, with a full-blown golf cart, much like the show, um, and he comes in with a full-on like kind of circuit board where he can control everything. I thought this scene was hilarious and I, and I thought the cast did an amazing job, but he comes in and is trying to save the day. He tries to shut down the rift portal that they're, they're trying to open up the rift for the experience to start. And of course, with that being said, danger strikes ahead. But okay, so as Dustin opens or shuts down th this rift, uh, it starts getting bad from there and you start hearing the sounds of our first Demogorgon. 
Now, it is really cool how they did the Demogorgon suits. I will say this. They were way better than Halloween Horror Nights' suits. They did a pretty good job on how these were executed, and it was cool to see them run in between your cars and at your cars. Really cool. Uh, just a reminder, too. Your windows are up the entire time through this experience. So, you are in your car. They ask you to turn off your headlights, windows up the entire experience, and you actually tune into a radio station. I believe it was 98.5, um, which is the second radio station you turn to. I think the first radio station that you turn to while you're waiting in the Starcourt Mall queue is 90.5 um, but you are in the radio station the entire time I highly suggest you blast that in your car as the experience is going on it gives it a much better vibe and experience it is really cool but the Demogorgon comes running out and chases Dustin Steve Robin and all the Russian uh, people that are in this base and the Demogorgon finally goes back and you hear him offset kill some of the Russian guards at this point, Robin, Dustin, and Steve tell you that the only way to uh, defeat the so-called Mind Flare from Season 3 and Season 2 is you have to go inside the Upside Down to figure out its weakness. So, they said, of course, Demogorgon was gone, but the Mind Flare is still out there and is a threat. This... Uh, scene ends and as this scene ends you are guided next to the uh, to the portal into the upside down which they executed perfectly as you walk in they have these kind of uh, bubble machines that make it look like the little orbs that you see in the upside down which I thought was amazing it was really cool you go through this next scene all you do see is a bunch of screens and a bunch of like the vines and everything they really immerse you into the upside down which i thought was cool giving you basically a recap of who the mind flare is and what you have to do to destroy it in this scene basically you're watching a bunch of screens and you see will get possessed by the mind flare from season two and then you see of course uh it getting passed down to billy and everything the mind flare has done in season two and season three uh while this is all going on you actually have people from uh the hawkins lab uh shining lights in your face and just coming up to your car and looking at you staring you down which i thought was really really cool uh this scene was actually uh a pretty much just a a a, a movie kind of scene but you did have actors coming around and uh checking you out and that stuff so i thought it was really cool the way they made the Upside Down look, it was phenomenal. I thought it was really cool. Really immersed you into that and everything. And the score for this was awesome. I believe it was the same people who did the score for the show. So that was really cool. Uh, the next scene you go to is the very top of the roof of this parking structure. And uh, this one goes out to my boy John because I know he's going to love this one especially. You are introduced to a kind of 360 immersive LED screen stage where you have, of course, all the characters from Season 3, Season 1, and Season 2 come out. Uh, you see the different stages of Eleven in this one. You see Billy, of course, at the very end, and you see all of his kind of so-called minions. You see Hopper, you see Robin, you see Steve, and you see Dustin, and of course you see Dustin's... Um, girlfriend Susie which I thought was a great thing and you also see of course the scientist who was supposedly um, Eleven's dad come out for a brief second but basically when you come up to this it's supposed to be the steel mill from season three and you see Billy of course on center stage all of his minions next to him and uh, as the show starts Billy is telling the speech to like he did to Eleven that this was all for you and this is all we're doing this for you and as he's talking to that speech his minions kind of go off and they look like they're falling down like they do in season three and turning into the mind flare at this point Eleven comes shooting up out of a uh, little box area that they had on a harness which I thought was so cool and they recreate the scene the iconic scene from season three where she's in slow motion in the um, uh, the the area where she when she uses her power she goes into like that other world of just black and she falls back into the water scene which I thought was cool and from there we start seeing flashbacks from season one and season two of her as a little girl this is the part I think of the show that really reminisced all, every season of Stranger Things which I thought was really cool um, and I thought it was just perfectly executed like I said you have that 360 uh, LED wall stage around you and the actors are just acting in front of it and it's it's freaking phenomenal um, as this goes on you start seeing the different phases of Eleven from when she was in her kind of test suit at Hawkins lab to her coming out uh, buzzed haired uh, to her wearing her dress and her jacket uh, all the way to her you know her shirt that she wears in season three and it's really cool uh, and they even have an awesome moment where she finds the egos and Hopper and her reunite um, which was basically the, the whole start for season two and I really enjoyed how they did that uh, my only disappointment about this scene is you didn't uh, really about the whole experience 
other than the very beginning, you didn't really see uh, the other kids like Mike, Lucas, and uh, Will, who are also very major plot points to uh, these seasons because they're some of the main characters. Also, you didn't get to see Winona Ryder's character, um, which was kind of a bummer, but uh, for, the, for the most part, the characters that you do see in this experience is, of course, Billy, uh, Eleven, Max, uh, Steven Robin, Dustin, uh, Hopper, uh, of course, all the Russian villains and, of course, the scientist from the first season who plays Eleven's dad. But that's about it. You don't really get to see the other kids other than the very beginning, which I thought that was still cool that you got to see them in the beginning. But I would have liked to have seen them more involved with the whole theatrics. Well, um, I, I know with the, the first scene that you go through, they're not really too much involved because that was more of a, a Dustin, um, Rob, and Steve thing. And, of course, with the second thing, it was more like... You, you see them a lot on the video in the second room, but I, I would have liked to have seen more actors who portrayed Will, um, uh, Mike, and and Lucas, which I got to say, the actors, the, the choosing for the actors was super spot on. They looked really good as far as how they can, as close as they can get to these actors, which I thought was amazing. But overall, I think this was a, a really cool experience. It ends, um, of course, with Billy doing his iconic uh, scene from season three where he stops the mind flare and ends up getting killed. Um, and it's a really sad scene. They actually play that Heroes uh, song cover that they did in Season 3. Also, they did, to really end the entire thing, they did something really cool. Um, they pretty much teased Season 4, in a way. Uh, and being that the Duffer Brothers had a lot of involvement with this, that it's pretty much canon at this point. But um, basically, uh, with Hopper, of course, supposedly disappearing in season uh, three and getting confirmation that he will be returning in season four and their only trailer that they've ever released. Uh, it's really cool to see that um, the Linux security, which is the security team that was used for uh, you know the, the secret Russian base and everything, uh, pretty much kidnapped him and put him in the back of their van. There's a little news report that they actually filmed on location um, of them putting Hopper with a bag over his head, but he's wearing the Russian suit. So you're pretty much assuming that it is Hopper because they pretty much took him to Russia uh, as confirmed in season four trailer. But it, it was really cool to try to canon that in a little bit to kind of hype you up for season four. I know currently as of right now, season four has resumed filming again. So that should be coming out hopefully next summer. Um, but only time can tell at this point. But to end it all, I think the best thing is you hear the never-ending story song between Dustin and Susie, which was hilarious. It was cool to see that. Uh, what was really cool at the very end, as you're driving out, you actually see the same van that they threw Hopper in. Um, so they did a really good job bringing those vehicles to life. And uh, it was the exact van that you saw on the, 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 the news report and everything, which was really, really cool. But overall, I would say this experience has been thus far the best thing I've seen all Haunt season. Um... And I know I've said that a bunch to a diff bunch of different ones, but every time I go to something new, I'm just surprised and mesmerized as to what I'm seeing in, in front of me. And, and, and this one was really cool. They really immersed you into the Stranger Things universe, really felt like you were living in the 80s, and it was just cool. They have the 80s music playing as you go in, uh, and you're waiting. Even the wait time, we got there, our, our reservation was for 645, and we got there at 620 to let us in early to wait. Um, you are able to use the restroom beforehand, so you are able to park, and then they have a restroom in the back. So go ahead and use the restroom before you go on, because this experience is about an hour long in the parking garage. And then at the very end, you have your souvenir shop that you can actually buy. They give you a QR code to scan, and you can buy souvenirs right off your phone, and they will deliver them to your car. And before you exit the parking garage, they actually have bathrooms again, so if you had to go uh, during the thing and you had to hold it to the end, there's bathrooms available for you to use. Overall, though, I would I think I'm going to try to go back to this and do VIP this time around. I really enjoyed uh, this whole thing. People were dressed up in the 80s of gear. I wore my uh, They Live t-shirt and my Misfits hat because I set up my online profile beforehand and I was more of a punk character. So I was just trying to live up to that character. Uh, but it was really cool. The interactiveness was amazing, especially in the beginning. And like I said, shout out to that Steve character in the very first room. Uh, you, If you remember me, dude, you were fucking awesome. You're a legend, and I freaking applaud you. But 
nonetheless, I highly, highly recommend this if you could still get tickets. I believe this is going on now until about March. Uh, they extended the dates because these tickets are, they can't stay on the website. Like, they're selling out quick. So I think this is going until about February or March. Highly suggest if you can get yourself a ticket, even though it's later in the season, do it because this is such an amazing experience that you don't want to miss out on. And I even heard rumors that they're thinking about taking this on the road after they're done with Los Angeles. So get it while you can still get tickets and while it's still here because this is such an experience you do not want to miss out on. Uh, me explaining it does no justice to what you're going to see at this event. Uh, like I said, it's about an hour long, so prepare to use the restroom beforehand and after uh, you're done with the experience, there's restrooms available as well. But nonetheless, guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this uh, review. I, I'm sorry I couldn't give you any footage. They're very uh, strict on the policy of no filming inside the parking garage at all. However, I was happy enough to get uh, footage uh, in the pre-show where the big uh, Starcourt Marvel side is at. But it was such a fun time, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. But that is going to do it, guys. I'm Anthony from the Knights of Horror. Make sure to hit that subscribe button with that bell notification to be aware every time I put up a new video. Follow us on social media at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at the Knights of Horror on Instagram. I'm Anthony, and I will see you guys next time.